Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 47 of Direwolf20's Let's Play. I'm picking up pretty much right where I left off last episode, and there's a couple things I want to change up in my system in this room, so I'll be right back to play around with my nuclear reactor a little bit. Um, what I've designed here is a neat little automatic shutoff system uh, in case there's no ice coming through here. Because as we know, there's a brief duration when we first turn on this machine, both of them at the same time that is, that uh, the reactor is going to be on but no ice is going to be coming through. And that's going to be a problem because if we don't get any ice coming through, um, this thing could potentially blow up. So what I want to do is create an automatic kill switch that will, uh, you know, automatically detect if there's no ice flowing through this pneumatic tube system that it automatically turns off um, the nuclear reactor. And in order to do that, I've set up a neat little logic gate system here. What I've got is a timer set to a two second interval. So we should be getting ice every 1.5 seconds, right? Once it's up and running. So by setting this to a two second interval, um, we'll have a two second delay. And then here I have an RS latch, right? Same thing that we've used a bunch of times. And what's going to happen is, um, as items come through, this is going to simulate an item detector, right? Um, as items come through every 1.5 seconds, it's going to keep toggling here. And you can see that the redstone output, which is right here, is currently off. So uh, this thing is not detecting any problems with items flowing through. However, if we go ahead and stop receiving items for a second, you'll note that now it's emitting a redstone current, and it's going to keep emitting a redstone current until we get a new item flowing through the system. So, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this by creating an item detector, which I don't think I've shown you guys just yet. So let's see if we can find out the recipe for that guy. Ah, it's a little complicated, so I'm going to have to go back to my main base here. So let's run upstairs and craft an item detector. Um, Pretty straightforward, as you saw. Uh, you guys haven't seen uh, too many complicated things yet. So let's see. That should do it. Gonna need those guys, and I'm gonna need some uh, of these guys. Throw them into my alloy furnace here, and I'll be right back once I'm done. All right, got these red doped wafers. Let's go over here and overlay the recipe. Gonna need the brass ingots, some pneumatic tubes, some red doped wafers, and a pressure plate in the middle. We've got our item detector. Sweet. Let's go back downstairs. I'll meet you guys there. All right, so what the item detector is gonna do, and I'm gonna place it right here, and hopefully I'll line this thing up properly. I think that's correct, is items will go in the one side and they'll come out the other side, and uh, there's an interface here. You can tell it what items to detect, but we'll just leave it blank for now, because the only items flowing through here are fine. Um, and uh, I forget what this option does here. Hang on one sec. All right, so this mode will emit a redstone signal for every item passing through. So if you put a stack of 64 items through here, one stack, it'll emit 64 pulses which would work for our purposes, but we don't want that. Um, I'm gonna switch this guy to this mode, which is um, it'll emit one pulse for every stack that goes through. So if you put one item through, it'll emit a pulse, and if you put 10 items through in one stack, it'll emit a pulse. Um, and if you put 64 items through in one stack, it'll also emit one pulse. Um, and then the third mode is stuffed, is um, it'll jam up the uh, item detector here if uh, the, block, the items have nowhere to go. But that's fine, we're gonna go ahead and let this guy be okay just the way he is. Um, what I want to do with this now is set up down here just that little logic gate system that I initially created right here. So what I'm going to need is, um, first off, some red wiring, which will come off. And this is simulating to be my item detector, right? So uh, what I really want is my item detector to be here. And this will be my red alloy wiring. So we'll do that like so. And then uh, from there, we want one off to the left and one in front. So we'll simulate that right here and here. Okay, looking good so far. And maybe I'll turn off my force field because uh, I definitely have everything disabled at the moment, right? I better make sure everything is manually off just in case. This guy shouldn't have any issues, but you can see he's getting low. I actually uh, cheated in some Lapatron crystals, charged them up, and then destroyed them. <laughs> so uh, you can call it cheating if you want, but basically I just wasted 10 million EU. So I call that the opposite of cheating. Uh, but anyway, so let's place down here my timer goes in front of this guy, followed by my RS NOR latch. Okay, so timer 
and RS NOR latch. Timer and RS NOR latch. And let me just activate this guy so he's not spinning around real quick. Uh, this is manual kill switch right here, right? Uh, and then what I want to do also is have these strips running here and here, and this guy running around here like this. Okay, and we wanted this guy facing this way, and then our output is actually right here. So I'm going to run this straight up the wall here and have it catch up with this guy. So where's my Swift Wolf's ring? And I'll clean the wall up in a little bit. But this is going to basically be where I uh, meet of the minds, if you will. We'll have this guy running like so, and now that's going to keep everything good and smooth, right? But, uh, you know, if we were to turn this guy off, you'll see everything's going to keep uh, stuck because we've got this redstone wire coming in, right? But if I break this just for demonstration purposes, what should happen now is this timer um, should start detecting... Now, you know what? This wire here was going to cause a problem for me, isn't it? So I don't know if you guys can tell, but this redstone wire here is keeping my timer stuck. So I'm going to knock this thing off here and go ahead and put this guy up like so, and that will prevent it from keeping the timer stuck. So now we're cool, right? So what's going to happen is, hopefully everything's working properly at this point, um, the timer will continue to detect and will keep the redstone signal active running up here, as you can see. And this guy, if he's connected, shouldn't interact with the system at all. Right, that's what I expected to happen. Much better. And then uh, if we get our redstone lever here, just to simulate what would happen if there is an item flowing through the system. Hmm. Now what did I break? And I think I figured out what the problem is. It's because these two lines are connected. So I need to actually separate those out uh, by using a redstone jacketed wire. And is this a regular pneumatic tube? Yeah, so I need this to be a redstone tube. Um, we'll place this guy here, right? And then that redstone tube is going to hook up to this guy with a stone jacketed wire. And then we want a uh, cover strip like so. And that solves my problem. So there we go. So now everything's good, right? So uh, we've got this wire keeping things stopped until we receive some redstone signals that uh, basically say, no, 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 it's cool, everything's good. Well, that's not a good simulation because it's not the actual items flowing through, but uh, let's go ahead and uh, make that happen real fast. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is uh, just bump this guy up to 42. Uh, so that no longer is it the redstone wireless thing keeping this thing going, right? So let's activate our ice machine. And watch what happens down here when ice flows through. See? So now that we've got a real ice flow going in a second here, remember we have to wait for the machine to warm up, it's keeping the nuclear reactor off at the moment, right? But now it's letting the nuclear reactor run. Look at that. And this redstone signal is staying off. So that would allow the nuclear reactor to run. And then if we were to turn off our ice machine, okay, as long as the ice is not flowing through, we're going to have a steady redstone signal up here, which keeps the nuclear reactor off. So as soon as ice stops flowing for whatever reason, the nuclear reactor will receive a redstone signal and will not be allowed to run. So let's wire this up cover everything and we'll be right back once everything looks purdy again. Alright guys, I just covered up the wall a little bit, but I want to be able to see this little redstone system for a few minutes to make sure everything's good. So now for the ultimate test. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this guy. That shouldn't affect any of the redstone stuff that I just created because it's all happening underneath the flooring there. And I'm gonna turn on my nuclear reactor. Right? Dun dun dun. Nuclear reactor should be on at the moment. It is. Why is that? Did I knock a wire or mess something up in here? Oh yeah, I covered up here. Ha! <laughs> what a noob. That was a pretty uber noobish mistake there. 
So I didn't mean to cover that guy up, so let's seal this wall back again. I'm all sitting here saying, like, did I mess something up with my wiring or something? No, 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 of course not. I'm just being stupid. Covered up the wrong block. All right, now we should be good again. Uh, I'm going to dig through here and just check out what my nuclear reactor has got in terms of ice. Oh, yeah, we're low. See? That thing was allowed to run for a few seconds. <laughs> that was almost a problem. All right, so uh, at this point, we've got a nuclear reactor receiving a signal. And if we allow it to run with this lever, see how it's still not allowed to run? Nope. That's because that guy is still ticking down there. I have to have my ice machine on, producing ice, and ice has to be flowing through the system to allow it to run. Now the nuclear reactor is allowed to run, but as soon as ice stops flowing through, it turns it off again. Pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna go switch this guy back to frequency 41, and I'm gonna allow both machines to run by turning this lever off. Um, but 41 is still keeping both the ice machine you can see it's not running at the moment because of 41. It just turned off, so there's still some snowballs flowing through the system. Um, and then we've got um, the nuclear reactor being kept on again by wireless frequency 41. Now I'm going to go ahead and drain this thing out, and I'll be back in a minute once it's pretty low so we can simulate everything working properly. Be right back. All right, guys, so to simulate this little thing running, I'm going to spawn myself a Lapidron Crystal, and don't worry, I'll delete it when I'm done. It's always been my opinion that if you're going to cheat to uh, test your products, as long as you delete whatever you cheated in as a temporary test, uh, just to save yourself time and resources, that's fine. So I'm just testing a logic system here, so I feel it's okay. So what I'm going to do is let this Lapidron Crystal hang out in here, and it should completely drain my MFSU in about a minute. Once that happens, it's going to emit a redstone signal, which will activate this RS latch, turning off wireless frequency 41. Wireless frequency 41 behind the wall here will turn off, which will allow my ice machine to start running. However, because of this logic system down here, my nuclear reactor won't turn on just yet. It'll wait for that ice machine to uh, get some ice flowing before it turns on, and we'll see that happen in about a moment here. Yeah, look, we're pretty low on juice. So pretty much as soon as we hit the less than 512 mark, we should see this thing toggle on. Here goes nothing. So this guy should toggle on, turning off 41. Ta-da! And over here, this timer is keeping this thing going. But the ice going through is going to allow the nuclear reactor to start running. And you can see that we didn't have enough room for that ice that went in there. That's okay. Now it's letting the warm-up cycle go, so now we're starting to warm up on the ice production. Now our nuclear reactor is running. See, all the ice being drained out of the system indicates it's running. So I definitely want to get this thing turned on pretty darn fast. And now we've got enough ice to keep this guy cool, I hope. And it'll fill up the nuclear reactors. Uh, the nuclear reactor is going to fill up the MFSU, so let's see. Yeah, we're doing pretty good on ice here. Um, we had a little bit run out, but that's okay. We'll see what happens. Well, this should pick back up and start refilling again. So yeah, we're already starting to get numbers back up to a high number. So that's good. And now let's see what happens over here with this MFSU. And of course, the force field is going to help protect it. And I'll delete this Lapatron. Remember, it was just a, you know, spawned in for testing purposes. Go back to recipe mode. Um, so this guy should be producing a little bit of a surplus of ice, remember. Um, producing a little bit more than we need. So you can see this 33 is going to keep going up and up, and we should uh, at some point no longer see 33, um, and then at some point no longer see 34. So yeah, we're starting to produce a little bit more ice than we need. See how that number is never dropping too low? Good indication that we're producing a little bit more ice than we need. All right, and how's our energy production treating our MFSU over here? Looking pretty good, about 3 million EU. Once it fills up to 10 million, it's going to emit off the top here, capacitor full, redstone signal, which will run over through here, trigger our RS latch, turn on frequency 41, and keep it on until this thing reaches empty again, which is pretty much uh, ideal. <laughs> I don't think I could ask for anything more. While I'm waiting for that, maybe I should dig into my red bags here and uh, get some covers going. Just make things look a little bit purdy. You know, I don't want to have it too well covered here, but uh, I do want to at least make things look a little bit nice. So 
So yeah, that's not bad. And I could probably even just put, uh, you know, a total block right here. Yeah, everything looks good. But I like to see those guys running to make sure everything's groovy. So I'm going to let that happen. Um, maybe I want to keep this block just so I can go in every now and then and check to make sure that we're not running low on ice and nothing's happening. So yeah, we're up into the 40s now. That's a very good indication that we're producing more ice than we're using every second or so. And uh, checking this guy out, about 5 million. Let's go check on our snowballs. Yeah, we're good. Still hovering around 3 or 4. So we might be producing a few extra snowballs than we can handle, but uh, nothing I'm going to be too worried about right now. At some point, I might put an extra chest somewhere to collect unused snowballs, like I mentioned last episode, but I'll probably not have to worry too much about that. It's okay. You could always just, you know, drop them out over a pit of lava. That works, too. So, yeah, definitely plenty of ice building up. How are we for uh, EMC in here? Yeah, 815. <laughs> this could have easily been a pit of lava. It could have been anything, really. Um, I just needed a way to burn up any excess production. So that's all well and good. How are we doing over here? Almost at the 10 million point. And uh, I think I'm pretty much done with this nuclear reactor. I don't think there's anything else I need to do with it, to be honest with you. Um, we've got it automatically turning off when we fill up our energy storage. We have it automatically turning on when there's a, about, you know, a sufficient amount to produce. We've got a safety system here to make sure there's ice flowing through. Um, it'll automatically turn off if ice stops flowing and turn back on once ice does come back. So, uh, I don't know. I feel like we're uh, in pretty good shape. I don't foresee any problems. I'm sure somebody will think of something that I missed. But uh, for now, it looks pretty solid. And I was able to babble long enough to get this guy up to almost 9 million. So you can see lots of EM, uh, EU being produced. Frequency 41, everything's groovy. All right. So uh, in a moment here, this guy's going to turn off. And we should automatically see our nuclear reactor turn off. And we'll know that's going to happen when this redstone signal activates. I'll get up in the flight mode so you guys can see that. So how are we doing over here? Oh yeah, real close, 9.8 million. So our redstone signal should show up any second now. Ta-da, there it is. Nuclear reactor turned off. All the ice being produced at this point is going into the overflow chest because uh, it's full now. The ice isn't being used by the nuclear reactor and our snow machine is automatically turned off. And we've got a little bit excess ice hanging out in there, but that's fine. That'll get pulled out next time uh, the reactor turns on. So you can see this guy emitting its redstone signal, caused our RS latch to trip, and now we won't start generating power again until this MFSU is completely empty. Awesome. All right, I think I'm pretty much done building my nuclear reactor. I think it's pretty sweet, actually. I'm pretty proud of this thing. Nice. All right, guys, and real quick, I'm going to go ahead and add that glass fiber cable thing uh, running straight down here. Uh, let's see, how exactly do I want to run this thing? Don't want to interfere with too many uh, systems, but I want this to run all the way over here, probably behind this wall, and run right over into my uh, MFE right here. So that, or the MFSU that is, so let's run this guy. I'm going to start running it here and then we'll uh, kind of progress from there. Basically going to run it straight over to my MFSUs back there. So hopefully this guy will uh, charge up and not be a problem for me anymore. So probably going to run them under the ground. I'm probably going to need a few more glass fiber cables. Why don't I go craft a few more? I'll be right back. There we go. Got myself some fiber cables. Going to go run back down underground there. Perfect. Uh, that should suffice for now. And I'm just going to dig straight down here like this. And I'll run it like behind this wall. This will probably be a nice spot. Don't think I'm breaking anything too major here. Well, all right, yeah, I'm breaking a few things, aren't I? Uh, definitely don't want this to be so apparent. So give me a minute to think about exactly where I want to build this thing, and I'll be right back. Yeah, I'm thinking I'll just go deeper. That should work. Oh, then unless I fall down here. Hooray for water. That was cool. All right, uh, let me get out my lava amulet thingy here so i don't have to worry too much about that stuff all right and uh swift wolves 
boy, that was, uh, that was dangerous, huh? <laughs> that was, uh, that was a little scary. I totally thought I was gonna die there. Hooray for landing in water. Alright, where was I now? Oh yeah, right around here somewhere. Yeah, not, uh, not terribly, uh, awesome. A little scary, but, uh, I survived to fly another day. Alright, let me get out of this bind that I got myself into and try that a little bit again. I'm just going to run my fiber optic cables straight over to this side of the room. Yeah, here's where I want to be. Now, is it going to be a problem for me if I go uh, break in this block? No, nah, it should be fine. Not that it's a big deal if I do. Yeah, let's try it. Alright, so I'm going to run my fiber cable like this. And it's okay if that connects twice, not a big deal. And everything's nice and smooth here, so everything should be good. And because I'm connecting to an MFSU, I don't need any kind of stuff to interfere. That should work. Actually, I don't want that there. I want it here. And now we should be getting some energy directly into our MFSU. Perfect. Everything's good. And uh, I'll seal up this wall, and everything should look nice. So that was a little fun adventure, wasn't it? think you're just going to be running some cabling, and all of a sudden you land almost in lava. Nice. I do have to seal up this wall, too. I'm going to do some uh, tidying up with uh, just aesthetic stuff and uh, come back shortly. So I'll be back. All right, much better looking. Uh, everything's nice and cleaned up now, and I think that's it. And guys, since I've spent so much time down in my uh, room down there, I haven't really been checking on my bees. So let's see, I've got my Diligent Princess, and I stole these Diligent Industrious Hybrids. I'm hoping at some point I can get back into the Industrious line. Still no luck with that. Um, this queen was cultivated, so that's cool. I want to do something with her. I think it was down in the uh, nether that I was going to worry about that. But our Sinisters, as you can see, are still producing pretty well. And ooh, I got an Imperial Queen? How did I do that? Ha! Huh, must have been just pure luck. Um, but yeah, I got the Imperial Dr Queen. How cool is that? What did we get here? I got some Imperial Drones, and I got some Majestic Drones. So I guess my Majestics must have mated with my um, uh, Nobles, which got me a Majestic Imperial Drone. Wow, I got like super lucky with that. So yeah, as you can see here, um, my Majestics mated with my Nobles, and uh, wound up creating the Imperial Line. Ha <laughs> ha, sweet. See what happens when you don't pay any attention to things and they just run automatically? I love it. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to leave these Imperial drones in here and I'll talk to you guys about what Imperial drones make. Dun 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 dun, royal jelly! Alright, so Imperial bees will produce uh, honeydew and royal jelly, which is this stuff. Um, if we open up our NEI here, we can see royal jelly is an important ingredient along with honeydew and a wax capsule to make ambrosia. Ooh, look at it. It's glowing and everything. Let's craft some and see what it does. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab a wax capsule, which uh, should easily have enough wax to handle that request. Um, so let's do that. And then I'm going to grab the honeydew that I need for that stuff. And uh, what was the recipe on this guy again? All right, royal jelly in the middle, wax capsules on the top. All right, Ambrosia. Let's check this stuff out, huh? It's glowing, so it must be cool. So here I am literally running in circles, so I get a very low health bar, um, and hopefully it'll give a good indication to you guys of uh, just how good this Ambrosia stuff is. And I'll be honest with you, I've never crafted or used it before, so I don't even know what it does. All right, I've got a pretty low health bar here. Let's eat it. Ooh, that's cool. Ooh, I got regeneration. Sweet. Look at my little bar down there doing its regeneration thing. So that is cool. Uh, Ambrosia gives you a lot of health and gives you a little regeneration, which will be nice if you ever want to go fight and stuff. 
Uh, so that is some awesome stuff. I like ambrosia. I'm going to hang on to that recipe, and I might even go as far as to create an auto-crafting recipe for it, but we'll see. Uh, next up, I want to go check my build craft room. How are we doing in here? Oh, good. We're pretty much out of uh, fuel, and if we check our combustion engines, we're definitely low on fuel. So what I'm going to do real quick is uh, knock this pipe off, and hopefully all these goofy particles go away. Yeah, in about 10 seconds or so knock these two pipes off because we want to make sure there's no little incidents of fuel at the bottom down there. Um, we got we experienced this when we did our uh, you know oil to biogas recipe over there. I'm going to pop this guy in here and this guy in here and this guy down there. Now we can start producing and I'm going to turn this lever off because we don't want any more stuff flowing through. Um, biofuel. So biogas can run in biogas engines and I think you guys have seen that. Uh, let's see, biogas engine. Um, that'll run with biomass, okay, and which is the green stuff right here. However, we can also produce biofuel, which is either created with a uh, distiller. Is that what it's called? Nope. I was close, though, I'm pretty sure. Let's do that just to make it a shorter list here. Uh, it's one of these nifty machines. Fermenter? That might have been it. Still, that's it, the still. Uh, this guy is what you can use to convert biomass into fuel, into biofuel. However, recently it was configured so that your refinery can accept biofuel. So let's grab a bag here real quick, and I'll demonstrate that as soon as I find a bucket that's empty. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and steal a bucket of this stuff. And you'll note real quick that I can now hopefully put biomass in the refinery on the sides there, and you can see biofuel is a valid option in your refinery. Now refineries have a higher uh, cost to them. You can see your uh, still here, the recipe for this guy, is just some redstone and a sturdy machine. And your refinery is a diamond gear, which is four diamonds each. So uh, four diamonds versus four redstone, obviously the still is a lot cheaper of a machine. It works pretty much the same. You put bio gas or biomass into the still and it'll pump out um, some fuel for you. But since I already have this whole refinery set up, there's no sense in reinventing the wheel. Like I said, it'll work just fine. You don't have to define what goes in. This will just now prevent oil from going in this refinery accidentally. It will only accept uh, biogas. But without these settings, it'll accept whatever comes in the lines. So I think we're cool with that. So let's go ahead and flip this lever real quick. And that'll let our biogas fill into our refineries. And then we'll go ahead and hit frequency 3, which is our refinery control, which will allow some power to go in there. That looks pretty solid. Stuff's going to run. I do want to go ahead and turn off my quarry for just a moment. And that should prevent power from flowing to the quarry. What's this guy doing? Frequency 2? I forget what he's for. That is Power Teleport 2 is my centrifuge. I think I dropped some stuff in my centrifuge. Uh, let's check that out. Yeah, I had thrown some honeycombs in there. So that's fine. Oh, that's not cool. Yeah, definitely want to put these back in here, the simmering combs. And I'll get these honeycombs out of here. So, all's well. Um, back to this little room. We should have a pretty solid amount of power going in here. Not sure... How did that get in there again? See? That weirdness happens every now and then. I'm just going to knock that guy off. Um, place this back. Is my valve pipe just aligned wrong? I don't know. But uh, what I'm going to do is knock this guy off for a moment. And place this back down. Maybe even knock this off just to be nice and safe. See, this happened before, too, and you guys said it was because I had my, uh, I forgot to hit my valve pipe with a wrench. That's probably true, but, uh, I don't know, let's see. We'll reconnect this guy, and it should only allow biogas in. And then we can place this guy down, and everything should be good. So, yeah, now our biogas is going to drain, and everything's cool again. So you can see we're producing biofuel. So biogas can run in a biogas engine. And it doesn't last quite as long as fuel does. It burns up pretty quickly. 
And the interesting side effect of biogas engines, number one, they'll never explode no matter what you do, um, but you will need uh, to use lava to kickstart the engine. But once you start it with lava, it won't require any more lava to keep going, but if you turn it off and then back on again, it'll need a little bit of lava for that purpose. But um, biofuel, this stuff, will run in combustion engines and operates pretty much exactly like fuel. There's really no difference to it almost. I think it lasts a little bit less than regular fuel. I think it lasts about four-fifths the time of fuel, so you lose about 20% of the duration of the stuff. But considering we're producing as much as we are, I think we're in pretty good shape. Um, now my fermenter here, if you guys watched my spotlight on the latest changes, you'll notice that uh, the fermenter, it does have the ability to run off some of our bee products, and I might get into doing that in a future episode. For now, it's okay running off water, but uh, at some point, we're going to want to set up a squeezer in here to produce some of uh, the, the liquids that our bee products are getting for us, and then we'll be able to uh, do all kinds of cool stuff. I believe it's honeydew, this stuff, honey drops. Um, I can squeeze those and get honey out of them and put them instead of water in here now and it'll produce more of this biogas stuff. But we'll get to that in a future episode. For now, I'm just going to let this stuff run for a few minutes and produce a whole good amount of biofuel, which I'll replace in my combustion engines in the future. Cool. And guys, I'm sorry to say, but this feels like a pretty good wrapping up point for episode 47. I uh, got my nuclear reactor pretty much complete. I don't think there's much else that I can do with that thing down there. It's just going to run and run and run and produce energy, at least until those uranium cells run out. And when they do, maybe I'll build a uh, breeder reactor. Um, but pretty soon, I'm going to have to start, uh, you know, worrying about how to use all this power. And don't worry, that's coming. So let's see, this thing's nice and cool. It's not running because this guy... He's got a very small amount of energy missing. Remember, we're spending energy here to keep this force field running at all times. I could, if I really, really wanted to, set it up so that the force field turns off if the nuclear reactor is not running. Eh, I'd rather just leave the thing on all the time. It uses such a small amount of energy. Uh, just a nice extra safety precaution. So anyway, babbled on long enough. This is Direwolf20 signing off on episode 47. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take it easy.